How's it going, everybody? It's Clint from the Die Hard MMA Podcast. I haven't done one of these little shout outs for a week or so. I apologize. I got busy, fell a little bit behind. So I wanted to have just a little powwow with you here for uh, UFC Vegas 10 real quick and go over a couple of things. First off, I've got to give my shout outs. I've gotten a couple of tips recently and you all know I like to give you props when you do that because it means the absolute world to me. Thank you all so much for the love and support. As always, We've got my guy Michael Lunday, longtime fan supporter of the show. Thank you, my friend, for your constant support. AJ Nasso. We've got Manny, Josh Yoke, Corey McAvoy. Uh, we've McAvoy. Sorry, I have no idea. I always butcher your guys' names. I do apologize. Matt Bressler, Spencer No, Nikos Clementos, Rose D, and Basio Guido. Thank you all so much for the support. It means the world to me. I love that you're cashing and making money off of the things that you learn from the podcast. And if you're just throwing five or ten bucks because you enjoy the show, that's great as well. I, you know, we always are trying to win money. We're trying to have a good time sports betting. But at the same time, I'm really just trying to make an entertaining show. So if you support the show because you love it, that just means the absolute world to me. So thank you all so much for that. What we ended up doing here with UFC Vegas 10, the card just fell apart. I had four bets locked and loaded, five bets locked and loaded. Two of those have been canceled due to, uh, you know, COVID pullouts and injuries and such. And then I had one bet that I was really eyeballing, actually two bets that I was really, really eyeballing and I was going to make a move on those, but they were involved in those canceled plays as well. So I had expectations for this to be a big card with a lot of plays and maybe just a real swing for the fences weekend. I felt like I had a really good read on it. But then as it fell apart, these replacement fights, they're so chalky. The totals, they're chalky on the direction I think they should go. The favorites are massive. The lines are wide. This is not a good betting card anymore. So because of that, what we are left with is the two-unit parlay, Billy Quarantino and Brian Barbarena. Slight plus money, two units laid on that one. And then I've got Atman Azatar at plus 120 and Michelle Waterson at plus 110. It's a very, very slim pickings type of card for me. And those are, it's really back heavy. That's all going to be the end of the main card. So not a lot of preliminary action because We've got all these minus 300 favorites, and even though I was looking to bet a couple of these unders, unfortunately, even the unders are just, they're juiced like minus 185 for the under two and a half, stuff like that, and I, I don't want to do a plus 100 under one and a half in some of these spots because I could see them being kind of sloppy, lower level type of fights that end up squeaking into the third round, stuff like that, so... Just going to go ahead and play it safe. You know, we talk about it all the time that sometimes the best bets to make are the hardest bets to make. Well, sometimes the best bets to make are no bets to make because if there are just no good spots, you're overextending yourself. I don't want to reach. I don't want to force it. I did find a couple of little sprinkles that I added onto the card today. We took Bobby Green in round three at 20 to one. That's just a 0.1 unit shot. Just a little sprinkle on that because we've seen his opponent get finished by strikes as he gets tired later. He's 47 years old. Bobby Green seems to be kind of peaking. He's in good shape. And the fact that his opponent is such a grapple heavy fighter, I feel like Bobby Green might end up down on the judges scorecards and really need to cement that comeback, really cement that third round. And because of that, I mean, he almost finished his last opponent in the third round. We tried this last time and we were that close to cashing it. So just a little sprinkle. I'm going to go right back to the well, see if maybe Bobby can get it done for us in the third round. Then I'm going to go ahead and take a little half unit shot on Andrea Lee by KOTKO. I know I talked about this one a couple of times. It's plus 750. So seven and a half to one for her to go ahead and win by knockout. Roxanne Modafiri, she's getting older. Her durability is waning. I think it's something that is totally possible considering the improvements that we've seen from Andrea Lee as of late. So just a little half unit shot. A couple of little small spots where we can maybe get decent payouts if they end up hitting for us, but also not hurt us so bad if they end up not pulling through. I do have a couple of Hail Marys for you guys. I did tweet these out, so you probably have seen them over on Twitter. If you haven't, here they are. $5 to win over two grand. Go ahead and take Julia Avila by KO, Billy Quarantino by submission, Bobby Green by knockout, and Michelle Watterson by submission. Now, obviously, that's a Hail Mary. Tiny little baby sprinkle, big payout reward. It's a lottery ticket. It gives us something to cheer for on some of those lower cards on the uh, earlier preliminary fights. And then I have another one for you. Kind of the same idea, just a little sprinkle. Ten bucks will net you about $650. Brock Weaver and uh, Turner 
going under two and a half, which I was tempted to bet Brock as a dog. I have since turned my opinion around. I'm not going to do that. And if anything, I think Turner probably does end up getting the finish here. Julia Vila by KO. Billy Quarantino by submission. Those two overlap on both the Hail Mary parlays, so they're kind of key for us there, crossing our fingers for those results. But then we're going to anchor this parlay with Herman Rodriguez under two and a half. I think one of those guys probably goes to sleep in early second round. And then Azatar and Worthy under two and a half as well. Same thing. I think Azatar probably wins by knockout early, or Kama Worthy wears him down and gets him later if he can't quite get the finish. So those are our couple of little Hail Mary parlays. It ties in a couple of other fights for us to sweat. Like I said, you throw 10 bucks on one, five bucks on the other one. It's got a decent payout should it hit and 15 bucks never hurt anybody. So that's what we're looking at for UFC Vegas 10. We're going to go ahead and just keep those bullets because we've got UFC Fight Island coming up. We're headed back to the place where we absolutely crushed it earlier in the year. I had such a good read on those spots. So we're crossing our fingers. There are going to be better spots on Fight Island. If you want to do chalky parlays with some of these big favorites, you go right ahead. That's the kind of situation that we're dealing with this weekend because these minus 300 favorites the problem is one of them is evidently going to shit the bed somebody's gonna have a bad night so i've tied a couple of favorites together myself but i don't want to trust alexander romanov at minus 450 you know jalen turner's all the way up to minus 400 and then you've got guys like roosevelt roberts who's now a minus 375 favorite i think if you can get the inside the distance prop on roosevelt roberts that's not a bad way to look because Kroom has been finished multiple times before. He's coming up a weight class on short notice here. That's not a bad spot. Julia Avila, minus 310. I think there is a chance that she TKOs Sajar Eubanks, but if she doesn't do that, this fight is probably going to be close and hairier than the line suggests. Then you've got guys like Bobby Green, which again, I think he could potentially win by knockout, but he also might be behind on the judges' scorecards before he does that because his opponent, Alon Patrick, is just such a bigger man wrestling offense, chain grappler, that's all he does. He's going to make it really tough for Bobby Green to get that space and strike. So I don't want to just parlay or lay that chalk on Bobby Green in that spot either. Like I said, they, I could go down the entire list of the card for you. Every single one of these favorites is the favorite for a reason, but every single one of them I feel like is priced incorrectly, and these lines are way too wide. So should be a fun night of fights more often than not this week fireball and popcorn baby if you haven't done it already head over to pub sports radio shop they've got the fireball and popcorn shirts they've got the Die Hard logo shirts and the new Die Hard stimulus check t-shirts so go ahead and snag one today if you haven't already i'm going to be shipping the winners t-shirts out those haven't gone out yet i apologize for my delay like i said things have been a little bit crazy over here thank you all so much for tuning in i appreciate everything you do subscribe to me here on youtube if you haven't already Follow me at DieHardMMAPod on Twitter. I'm assuming you're already following me there if you're seeing this video. Good luck on all your action. We got football. You know I've got my Vikings tomorrow. So everybody, good luck. We'll see you tonight online, and let's roll.